host microbial interaction this is the second lecture following introduction of the medical microbiology i think up to now we have discussed about the uh, disease causation chain of infection as well as some bit about the gram stain as well as microscopy i think due to this prevalent condition uh, even with the link those things are provided but this is the proper lecture series we'll proceed with this what is host microbial interaction perhaps micro or other way infectious agent there are multiple infectious agents mainly bacteria but fungi viruses prions even parasites are there so host is the victim we'll say so there is interaction between host and parasite other way interaction means one way disease acquisition how they develop the disease other way how they protect from the disease those uh, in a one arm we can say it's a host microbial interaction for that you have to learn or get idea about few terminologies as well as some concepts normal flora is what normal flora it will be a separate lecture but uh, in this case we'll say normal flora is microbes who lives in our body surfaces as well as some mucous membranes uh, with a symbiotic relationship so there is no harm from those microorganisms even staphylococcus aureus you will learn in following lectures it's a genuine pathogen it's a pathogen but uh, most of us it's there it's kind of colonizer but in the normal flora it could be a part of normal flora in the healthcare worker but there are coagulates negative staphylococcus likewise there are several organisms anyway with the presence of normal flora if we look through our body surfaces with the electron microscope it's almost covered all the surface is covered from those microbes and there is no harm to us so there are a few benefits they provide vitamin k also there are some stimulation to our immune system as well as most important thing is it prevent colonization by potential pathogens so mainly those pathogens or we'll say those foreign microbes when they reach our body surfaces even the mucous membranes they have to compete with food and shelter with those normal residing microbes this is a pictorial presentation of microbial colonization so they are potential colonization sites mouth respiratory tract kang chang taiba that is again related to respiratory tract then other tracts like urogenital likewise there are alimentary tract so there are potential colonization sites considering pathogen apart from this protection i meant early we consider about pathogens pathogen can classify in mainly two ways that is primary pathogen and opportunistic pathogens primary pathogens in the sense they cause the disease upon infection that is not normally associated with the cost nowadays corona covid 19 corona virus influenza virus plague there are some examples opportunistic pathogens in the other way in contrast to primary pathogens they cause diseases under some specific conditions or circumstances like in the immunocompromised or low immune stage so they are some sometimes part of our normal flora as well like pseudomonas candida albicans it's a fungi pseudomonas is the bacteria they are usually low potential pathogens and opportunistic pathogens there are a few more you know 
So when you know bit about this type of pathogens, we'll discuss about the progression of disease. So earlier I put in LMA, so model as chain of infection. Now I think you could remember reservoir, portal of exit, mode of transmission, portal of entry. So transmission, there should be infectious dose. It's another term. Infectious dose depends on the pathogen. Sometimes even with the few organisms in the Shigella at around 10 to the power 1 to 2, that is 10 to 100 microbes will be enough to cause the disease. But in Salmonella, it requires thousands. So that's kind of pathogenicity or virulence of that particular microbe. So it depends. Other term is about the incubation period. So maybe a few days, maybe weeks, months. In the few days, common cold. Nowadays, we often encounter weeks, it may hepatitis A, hepatitis B, months like rabies. So incubation period is the period where time taken to develop symptoms. So once microbes is transmitted and enter into portal of entry, uh, there are a few steps to happen. Colonization, then it causes infection. So it takes few uh, durations, a few time. So it's kind of maybe hours, maybe weeks, like mentioned earlier. So incubation period, I think I have put in LMS. It's better to go through. About the convalescence, that's another terminology. So that is recovery, we say. Some organisms, most organisms, it's a clearing. There is a clearance. So you are following infection, body mounts immune response, as well as we treat. Ultimately, we get cured. Those organisms also washed off. But in there are few circumstances, those organisms will persist in our body. Like chickenpox, tuberculosis, even herpes simplex virus. So uh, I know this uh, in the early of the course, early in the course. So there are these terminologies, this pronunciation, everything is matters. But don't worry, in the time, time, you may get the family with these terminologies as well as about these microbes. So when you know about the progression of disease, so when you look, the, look through this slide, you can see about some different type of infections. Say acute, chronic and latent. Acute infection, it's a short time period. And this is manifestation is rapid, rapid as well as you can see short incubation period. Illness is there and convulsions recover or death. In the incubation period, prolonged and illness is prolonged in chronic. Latent infection, everything is similar. Incubation period, illness, convulsions may be there. Then there is a latent period. So illness may recur. That's a problem. Most viral infections as well as few bacterial infections cause latency. Cockpospules is another concept. It is proposed by Robert Koch. So it says perhaps uh, this is a fascinating observation because he was wondering about the not only himself, there are a lot of scientists thinking about the what is the mode of power, but how how they perhaps they cause a disease. So there are infectious agents, we, but we know, but on the good old days, they were exploring. So with these observations, he has positive. Let this cock positive, let us say, you see it's uh, it shows about the partic how particular infectious agent cause disease with the proof. So there are basically four postules. Microorganisms must be present in every case of the disease. Yes, but there are to be frank, it is not always. Not, not microbes is only required that maybe toxins can cause the disease. With the absence of the microbe but this is the early stage but still it is valid 
second organism must be grown in a pure culture from disease host imagine staphylococcus aureus or kind of any microbes has caused a disease and later we take a blood and do a culture if it is a real pathogen who is the responsible agent for causing the, the disease it should grow then produce the same disease from the pure culture so those organisms yield from that blood culture if we inject from not to another healthy person it must cause the disease in turn organisms recovered from experimental the infected the host that is the next step that's how it goes go through this you can clearly understand the scenario molecular positives that is applicable to modern era so in the sense genuine or pure cock positives still applicable and this is the advanced version just go through this and it says virulent gene no its product must be present as i said earlier toxins so likewise and ultimately in the fourth step antibodies again gene products are protective that means again it's a proof when you learn about the immunology you will understand further so we'll say toxin it's an antigen so body mounts antibodies again that particular specific antigen so they should be matched so that cause the causation proof of the causation so now in bit about those concepts how particular infectious agent establish an infection so as i said if you know the disease chain properly now it is portal of entry and those microbes are within the within our body or patient's body still patient is healthy so microbes entered by a different routes or modes of transmission fecal oral human to human animal to human vector borne environmental contact once encountered prior to establish an infection they should adhere adherence attachment so there are advantages prevents early clearance and it can produce toxins or disease related inflammatory reactions so it is it must adhere adherence there are multiple it's a mediated process it's a pili there are protruded materials so we'll say protrude arms like tiny objects so using this pili microbes adhere to host tissues other important thing is there's a term called tissue tropism so some microbes favor respiratory tract some microbes favor gastrointestinal tracts some may multiple so that depends on the, that is a character of that particular infectious agent so anyway adherence is required you can see the process pili with adhesions and host cell glycoprotein receptors for pili so there should be at receptor as well so you can see the binding 